I can't get out flying at the moment in these weird and difficult times, so I thought I'd test out this super cap to see how it performs on the bench. Now, this is a 16.7 farad super capacitor that's designed to keep you flying when you overstep the mark and there's nothing left in your main battery. It's a bit like a mini battery that can save you bacon if you get too carried away. Welcome to the Whirly Black channel. We're all used to seeing capacitors with values like 220 and 470 microfarads that we use for power supply video noise suppression. But this is 16.7 farads. Yep, that's a massive 16.7 farads. And this is a supercapacitor. Now, these have been around for a long time in the electronics world. They're used when you want to soak up energy quickly, but you don't need long-term storage. Although they're used to power backup memory, more recently they've been used to harvest regen braking energy on electric cars. Now, a capacitor stores energy by storing a static charge as opposed to an electrochemical reaction in a regular battery like your LiPo. Putting a voltage across the positive and negative plates simply charges up the capacitor. And this is similar to the build-up of electrical charge when you're walking on a carpet. And touching the object releases the energy through your finger. And these super caps are just that. And their makeup means they have effectively a huge capacitance. This one is 16.7 farads. So this little device from Vigood RC is really aimed at RC helis but it struck me it could be used on a wing or in fact any electric RC plane, although it's not much use for quads to be honest. The idea is you just plug it into a spare servo slot on your receiver and if your main battery drains down to the point the BEC can't power the receiver and the servos, you don't just crash and burn. And this super cap will keep your receiver and servos powered up for a short period so you can auto-rotate or glide to the ground under control. But why not just use another small battery? Well, this is lighter than most batteries. It's only about 40 grams. And you can just plug it in and forget about it. It passively charges with no worries or maintenance. So, how long do you get and how long does it take to charge? Since I'm stuck indoors for a while, I thought I'd test it. So what I've got here is an AR7000 receiver powered by my bench power supply up here. A couple of old servos I had lying around and I've got my Spectrum DX7. And all you need to do is plug this super cap into a spare slot on the receiver, which I've done there. And we can turn the power on. There we go. And there's some LEDs on top here, there's four of them, that show the state of the charge. And we can see it's charging up here. We'll see how long it takes to get fully charged. And this is spec to be powered off 5 to 8.4 volts. And by the way, there's no instructions with this, and the Vigood RC website is stuck behind Cloudflare and I just can't get to it. So I'm not sure what this button does. If you press it, it clears all the LEDs and I assume that that would be just resetting the charge to zero. But then when you let it go, they just immediately zoom back up to the top again. So if you fathom it out, let me know in the comments. So this is still charging, just give it a bit of time. Okay, so there we go, we are fully charged. We've got power on the receiver. So we are, ha oh, let's turn the transmitter on, that would help. Okay, oh, we're bound, okay. So we're flying around, not noticing our battery voltage, and then bang, I'll just turn the power supply off here. Now the super cap has taken over, you can see it's flashing here. So it's powering up the receivers, and I can still move the servos. Could have probably done with charging up this as well. 
So even though there's no main engine power, you can still glide or auto rotate to the ground. So here we go. How long have you got? Well, the receiver will be a lowish but fairly constant power drain and the servos will be taking much more. So how much you move them around determines how quickly the super cap discharges. But these are old, large and clunky servos, so compared to the latest efficient micro servos, they aren't great. But maybe you're going to get up to a minute more if you're economic with the controls. Let's just see where we get to. So we're down to two LEDs on here at the moment. More flying around, hopefully we can get to the ground. Still going, still going. There we go, we're done. I'll turn this off to stop it beeping. So after all that, is it worth it? Well, these are about 20 pounds in the UK, so it's not exactly expensive. And until I can get out with one of my wings, I haven't tried it in the wild. But when I do, I'll let you know what happens. I mean, it is fit and forget, and it may save you bacon and maybe a bigger and heavier crash, or maybe not crashing in the water. Anyway, let me know what you think. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check out the latest prices. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please do the subscribing bell thingy thing up here to get notified when I post a new video. I'll see you next time.